A Promised Land, page 18. I told myself then, and like to tell myself still that I left organizing because I saw the work I was doing as too slow, too limited, not able to match the needs of the people I hoped to serve. A local job training center couldn't make up for thousands of steel jobs lost by a plant closing. An after-school program couldn't compensate for chronically underfunded schools, or kids raised by their grandparents because both parents were doing time. On every issue, it seemed, we kept bumping up against somebody a politician, a bureaucrat, some distant CEO who had the power to make things better, but didn't. And when we did get concessions from them, it was most often too little, too late. The power to shape budgets and guide policy was what we needed, and that power lay elsewhere. Moreover, I came to realize that just two years before I arrived, there had I been a movement for change in Chicago, one that was both social and political a deep swift current that I had failed to fully appreciate because it hadn't conformed to my theories. It was the movement to elect Harold Washington as the city's first black mayor. It seemed like it sprang out of nowhere, as grassroots a political campaign as anything modem politics had ever seen. A small band of black activists and business leaders, tired of the chronic bias and inequities of America's most segregated big city, decided to register a record number of voters, and then drafted a rotund congressman of prodigious talent, but limited ambition to run for an office that appeared well out of reach. Nobody thought it had a chance. Even Harold was skeptical. The campaign operated hand-to-mouth, staffed largely by inexperienced volunteers. But then it happened some form of spontaneous combustion. People who had never thought about politics, people to who had never even voted, got swept up in the cause. Seniors and schoolchildren started sporting the campaign's blue buttons. A collective unwillingness to keep putting up with the steady accumulation of unfairness and slights all the bogus traffic stops and second-hand textbooks. All the times black folks walked past a park district field house on the north side and noticed how much nicer it was than the one in their neighborhood. All the times they'd been passed over for promotions or denied bank loans gathered like a cyclone and toppled city hall. By the time I arrived in Chicago, Harold was halfway through his first term. That's the end of page 18. Please press the next button, or press the next video and screen at the right side of the screen for page 19. Don't forget to click like and subscribe for more videos. Have a great day.